Tuesday. Tuesday was the Twadasi. Uh, and Lord Vamanadeva appears. It's called Vamana Twadasi. The day after Ekadasi. Monday was the Ekadasi. Tuesday was Lord Vamanadeva's appearance day. But we're going to speak about Lord Vamanadeva today because we didn't have any program on Tuesday. Because everyone was busy, right? Yes. And we're all going to school. Yes. Right? Too busy. So we're talk, going to talk, introduce to you about the pastime, Lord Vamanadeva, one of the one of the famous incarnations of the Lord, one of the Dasa avatars, Lord Vamanadeva. Lord Vamanadeva is also sometimes called Uru. So Lord Vamanadeva appears. A very special incarnation. He comes as the son of who knows the mother and father? Aditi and Kashyapa. Aditi and Kashyapa. And Kashyapa, right? Aditi, mother Aditi. Who is who is Aditi? You know her sister? Aditi. 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 She has a sister. There are two sisters, Diti and Aditi. Diti gave birth to. Two demons. <laughs> right? And Aditi, she's the mother of the demigods, like Indra. So Aditi is known as the mother of the demigods. Maybe you remember, there was a pastime when Lord Krishna uh, killed one demon who had stolen the earrings from Mother Aditi. And Lord Krishna brought them back to give them to Mother Aditi. And at that time, Lord Krishna took the Parijata tree. <laughs> That's another pastime. Anyway, uh, today we're speaking about Lord Vamana Day. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Welcome. Lord Vamana Day. So he appeared on the Dwadesi. And his, his has a very special purpose, actually, Aditi and Kashyapa. Old, he got married, he grew up, he got married, had children, and then his children also got married. Hare Krishna. No, Hare Krishna. Thank you. His children also got married, and they were also, you know, some of them anyway, were devotees, but we know Prahlad. family of the demons, right? It's famous, although Prahlad is a great devotee, he was born in the family of the demons. So although his fa father was a big demon, he was a great devotee. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Let me give you one. Thank you. Um, 
Okay, so uh, so we were saying Prahlad is a devotee, but he's born in the family of demons, and his grandson was Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj. And Bali Maharaj had a big army because he's in charge of all the demons. And sometimes the demons become very powerful. And they conquered the demigods. And they took over the heavenly planets. And when they took over the heavenly planets, then all the demigods headed by Indra, they had to leave their home. They had to go. Where will you go? You have no home. Where will you go? You have no home. Problem, huh? You have no home. Very important. The, 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 de the demigods had to go because the demons came and they took over the homes of the demigods and they were controlling the heavenly planets. So Mother Aditi, who is the mother of the demigods, she was lamenting the mothers love their children very much, right? When the mother sees the children go away to college, then she laments and she thinks, oh, when will my son or when will my daughter come home? And they feel the separation. So Mother Aditi was feeling the separation from her children, the demigods. So she begged her husband, Kashyapa, that how to get how to get our children home, how can they come home so long as these demons are here in the heavenly planets. So Kashyapa, first of all, he tried to speak some knowledge to her. Told her, you know, you shouldn't be attached, you know. It's the nature of time. Sometimes we're successful, sometimes we're not. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. Just like when you go for book distribution, right? Are any of you going for book distribution? Yes, Did you go for book distribution? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah? So sometimes people take a book, not every time, <laughs> right? Sometimes they take. Sometimes you're successful. Sometimes you're not. So we have to. So he was speaking, Kashyapa was speaking, but she was not very satisfied. Oh, you know, what about my children? I want them to come home. I want the demigods to come home. So then Kashyapa suggested that she could do some, make some vow, and by performing that vow, then she would be able to get a child who would help her to get back to heavenly plan. So it happened that Mother Aditi, she did one vow. She underwent some austerity. She did some... Do you do vows? Who, are you doing any vow? Now is Chaturmashya, right? Which month are we in now? Third month. Third month. Third, third month. Third month. Yeah, third month. Third month means they have to pass from milk. Milk, right? It's a vow, right? We do a vow like that. Is it only for sannyasis and brahmacharis to follow Chaturmashya? No, it's for everybody, right? All devotees. Everyone's supposed to do it. So we make some vows, just like Ikarasi, we don't eat grain on the Ikarasi. Did you observe Radhastami? Yes. You all went to Todu yes, for yes. Radhastami? Yes, Master. Did you do a half day fast? Yes. yes. Oh, that was a vow, right? It's all like that. Aditi also did a vow. And the result was she got a child, a very special child, who was the incarnation of the Supreme Lord, an incarnation of Lord Krishna. And that child was Vamana Dev. So Vamana Dev came in the form of a small dwarf. dwarf. It's a dwarf, you know, the dwarf. They don't grow big. It's always small. It's, and he's a Brahmana. He's a Brahmana. He's got a nice Brahman thread on. And he's 
wearing the deer skin and he was a Brahmana boy born from Kashyapa and Aditi. So this Brahmana boy came. Why did why did Lord Krishna choose to come as a Brahmana boy? It's very interesting because he wants to help Mother Aditi to get back the heavenly planets. She, he wants to help the demigods to, to come back to the... You know, Lord Krishna always takes the side of the demigods against the demons. Because the demigods are very favorable. They always try to support Krishna. So Lord Vamanadev came as a Brahmana boy and he came to see Bali Maharaj. And Bali Maharaj is he's in charge of the heavenly planets. He's become very powerful. And he's giving charity to all the Brahmanas. Right? When when people like great kings and big businessmen and so on, when they like to give charity, they like to give to the brahmanas. When they give to a brahmana, then they get more. They get they get more blessings. If they give to an ordinary person, it will come back an equal time. Whatever charity they give will come back an equal amount. But when you give to a brahmana, then it will come back many times. And if you give to a pure Brahmana, then it will come back hundreds and hundreds of times or even thousand times more. So people like to give charity to the pure Brahmana. So Lord Vamana Dev came in the form of a Brahmana boy and he came to see Bali Maharaj to beg charity because he has a plan that if he gets charity from Bali Maharaj, it will help him to give back the heavenly planets to the demigods. But there's a problem. The problem is Bali Maharaj has a guru. And his guru is called Sukracharya. Sukracharya, right. Sukracharya is the guru of the demon. And Sukracharya told Lord, he told Bali Maharaj, don't give him any charity. Now, before Sukracharya had told Bali Maharaj, very good to give charity, very good, it will help you to become more powerful. And that's how they were able to conquer the, de the demigods and take control of the heavens. But now Sukracharya has seen this ba this Vamana, the Lord Vamana Dev come, and he can see this Brahmana boy is not an ordinary boy, right? Then when the Brahmana boy, the little Brahmana boy comes, and he is asking for charity, Sukracharya is very suspicious. Oh, no, 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 no! Don't give him. Why not? You were telling me to give to Brahmanas is very good. Why not give him? Sukracharya said, He is Vishnu. This is Vishnu come. He's come to cheat you. If you give him charity, he may take everything away from you. Would you like that? When you give charity, you know, when we give charity, you know, do we, you know, you, we give something, but we don't give everything, you know. You're not going to give everything. We give something, but to give, to take away everything, oh, we'll feel cheated. So Shukracharya is worried that if Bali Maharaj gives him everything, there will be nothing left. No, Shukracharya is worried. This will not be very good. If my disciple loses all their money, then who will take care of me? <laughs> right? Sukracharya is thinking like this, that now my disciple Bali Maharaj is in, in, in charge of heaven. It's very good. 
I can enjoy heaven <laughs> along with my disciple. But if he loses everything, then it will not be good for me. What will I do? Who will maintain me? So Sukracharya is a bit worried like that, you know. He's, his name is Sukracharya. Means he's more interested in the material than in the spiritual. Some gurus, even though they're gurus, they're more concerned with the material than with the spiritual. You know, they want to help the disciple improve material. But they don't worry, they don't think about their spiritual benefit. So Bali Maharaj was confused because his guru was saying, don't give him any charity. But before he told him, give charity to Brahmanas. But this special Brahmana had come. No ordinary Brahmana, right? No ordinary Brahmana boy has come. We have nice boys here today, right? We'd be happy to give these boys charity, right? We could give them charity, but they're not incarnations of Godhead, <laughs> right? So Lord Vamanadev came and he's standing there looking very sweet and he is asking Vamanadev, he's asking Bali Maharaj rather, give me charity. And so Bali Maharaj asked him, what charity do you want? So Lord Vamanadev said, I only want three steps of land, right? Who's going, let me see, Haribo, this boy, stand up, stand up, stand up. We want to see three steps of land. Take three steps. One, one, take three steps. One, one, two, two. Oh, big steps. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, one, two, three. You get three steps. Three steps. One. One. Oh, small now. Three steps. One. Two. Okay, one more. One more, one more, one more. Okay, three. Okay, so three steps of land. Very good. Thank you very much. That's your charity. Yeah? Three steps of land. So, Bali Maharaj was surprised. He thought he only wants three steps of land. It's not very much. We saw he didn't cover even the whole room, you know. So three steps of land. Bali Maharaj said to him, why only take three steps of land? Don't you want more? I can give you more, you know, I'm the I'm king, I'm, I'm Bali Maharaj, I'm king of heaven. I can give you everything. Would you like a planet? Would you like a kingdom? You want, why, why only three steps of land? But Bali Maharaj, look, Lord Bamana Davis, he said, no, 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 three steps, it's enough. If I am not satisfied with three steps of land, I won't be satisfied with three planets. Let me just have three steps of land. It's enough for me. But Sukracharya is saying, no, no, don't give him. He's going to cheat you. He will take away everything. Don't give him. This is Vishnu. Right? Are you Vishnu? Huh? Are you Vishnu? You're a tiny part, a tiny, a tiny part, a tiny part of Vishnu. Yeah, we're all part and parcel of Vishnu, a tiny part of Vishnu. So, Sukracharya is saying, don't give him Bali Maharaj saying, well, if he is Vishnu, if he is Vishnu, then if he wants, he can take away everything anyway. I won't be able to stop him. And if, if he takes it from me, 
then I don't get any credit. But if I give it to him, if I give it to him, then it is, it's good for me, at least I gave it, right? I gave it willingly. So, let me give it, you know, if he, if, I don't know if he's Vishnu or not, but he's come asking charity, and I'm supposed to give charity to the Brahmanas, so let me give him what he wants. So Sukracharya was upset, and Lord Vamanadev had his water pot, his Kamandalu, and he's going to pour the water into the hand of Bali Maharaj to confirm that he can get the three steps of land. But Sukracharya, he has, he's a yogi, he's powerful. He entered, made himself very small. He entered into that pot of water and the water wouldn't come out. <laughs> Bali Maharaj. Uh, Lord Bamana Devi, he's got his water pot and he's trying to pour the water. <laughs> the water won't come out because Sukracharya had gone inside there. He wouldn't let the water come out. As long as the water didn't come out, then they couldn't give the vow, couldn't keep the promise. So Sukracharya was in the... So what happened was, uh, Lord Vamanadev they've got some straw and, he <laughs> and it went right in the eye of Sukracharya and Sukracharya had no eye after that, he lost his eye. So this way they got some water to pour into the hands of Bali Maharaj to keep the promise. All right, now three steps of land. So then the little Brahmana boy, then he takes the first step. And when he goes to take the first step, he becomes gigantic. And with one step, he covered half of the universe. Oh, everyone was amazed. A huge person with big legs. And he come, one leg went all the way up to the higher planets. One leg was on the that where they were, they're standing there, and the other leg covered the half of the universe. And then for the second step, he covered the other half of the universe. So the whole universe had been covered. So Bali Maharaj lost everything. So Lord Vamanadev then said to Bali Maharaj, you have cheated me. You told me I could get three steps of land. I've only taken two steps and I've covered everything. Where am I supposed to take the third step? That's a problem, right? We give a promise. We promise three steps of land. But with two steps covered everywhere, everything is gone where to take the third step. So, Bali Maharaj, very intelligent person. Actually, Lord Vamanadev, he arrested Bali Maharaj. He had him tied up because he said, he's a cheater, he lied, he promised three steps of land. I cannot, I've only taken two, nowhere else to take the third step. But Bali Maharaj, even though he had lost everything, he is very truthful. He wanted to keep his word. So he said to Lord Vamanadev, for your third step, you can take it on my head. So this was very pleasing to Lord Vamanadev. The, you know, of course, we would be happy, right? To get the lotus feet of Lord Vamanadev on our head, right? Take the lotus feet of the Lord on our head, that's very special. So, Bali Maharaj told Lord Vamanadev, you take the third step on my head, because although you covered the universe, you didn't cover me. I'm separate from the universe. 
so you can take that third step on my head. Bali Maharaj is our Acharya in surrendering everything to Krishna. Atmani Vedana. Very difficult to do, right? There are nine different kinds of Bhakti Yoga, beginning with hearing, like we're doing, and chanting, which we also do hearing and chanting and remembering, then offering prayers, serving the lotus feet, worshipping the Lord, serving the Lord, becoming his friend, also difficult to become the friend of the Lord. And then finally, Atmani Vedana, to surrender everything. You know, we can surrender a little, but to surrender everything, very difficult, right? Of course, at some point we have to surrender everything. At some point we have to leave this world, we have to give up everything. So, Bali Maharaj, anyway, he was a very special devotee because he has a wonderful grandfather, Prahlad Maharaj. And when he, when he was tied up like this, at that time Prahlad Maharaj came. His grandfather came and his Bali Maharaj's family all came and his wife and children. And they were, you know, they were sorry to see their father in this situation. You know, if you see your father like that, become a prisoner, tied up. One minute he's the king of heaven. He's got everything, very powerful. And people are all bowing to him and worshipping him. And even the brahmanas are coming and asking charity from him. And then the next minute, he's lost everything, everything taken from him. Hmm? Of course, he gave it. You could say it wasn't just taken. He gave it. He gave charity to Lord Vamanati. So Lord Vamanati came to play this trick on his on Actually, you can see that Bali Maharaj is also a devotee. Although he is born in the family from the demons, like his grandfather Prahlad, but he is also a devotee because he gave everything to Lord Vamanati. So, what happened after that? Lord Vamanati has taken everything away from Bali Maharaj. He's no longer the king of heaven, so the demigods can come back and take over the heavenly planet. Where will Bali Maharaj go? Well, the guru of Bali Maharaj was very angry, <laughs> right? And he cursed him. You did not follow my instruction. You don't follow the instruction of the guru. You go. <laughs> go to hell. You go down to the lower regions of the universe. So, Bali Maharaj had to go down to the lower region. But he went to a very special place in the universe, in the lower region of the universe. Satawa Loka. And it said that place where Bali Maharaj went, it was more opulent than the heavenly planets. It was a very special place. And Lord Vamanadev said, you go there and I'm also coming with you. I'm going to come with you as your doorkeeper. So nobody will trouble you. So this is the special mercy that Bali Maharaj got. And he is residing there even today in the lower regions of the universe, in this very special planet. 
And Lord Brahmanadeva is there as his doorkeeper, taking care of him, protecting him from any troublemakers who may come. So this pastime of Lord Brahmanadeva is very important, very wonderful, very glorious pastime. It shows the wonderful behavior of Bali Maharaj. How a devotee can give up everything for Krishna. They can sacrifice everything for, for, Krishna, for the Lord. And how the Lord appreciates whatever the devotee gives for him. The, the Lord becomes a servant. Bali Maharaj Thakri gave everything for, for Lord Vamanadev. Lord Vamanadev became his servant. So in this way, Indra and all the demigods could come back and live in heaven and look over the different affairs in the universe. Within the universe, there's often this situation, war between the demons and the demigods. Sometimes they combine together to help each other. Just like one time, the, the demigods and the demons were churning the ocean of milk. They wanted to get the nectar of immortality. Right? You want to get that nectar? Would you like to get the nectar of immortality? You don't grow old. You don't suffer. So the demigods and the demons were churning the ocean of milk to get the nectar. And of course, at that time, many things were produced. And then, of course, when the nectar did come, then Mohini Murti appeared. And she took the nectar and she distributed it. And she gave it to the demigods. So the demigods are very important servants of the Lord. And we respect all of them. We don't disrespect the demigods. You know, some people, they think, oh, they're only demigods. We don't worship them. We're, Vish we're Vaishnavas. We only worship Vishnu and Vishnu's incarnations. But we also offer our respects to the demigods because they're confidential servants of the Lord. So we don't disrespect them. And you can read how Lord Chaitanya, when he was traveling, he would go and visit many temples. He would go and visit temples of Lord Shiva and temples of Lord Mother Durga and so on. So we also, as devotees, we can visit other temples. We're not against them, but we know their position. We know who is the Supreme. So Lord Bamanadev comes and he shows how the Lord can appear as a young boy, as a Brahmana boy. Now, of course, it's not that every time the Lord comes as a Brahmana. As Lord Bamanadev, he comes as a Brahmana boy. Then later on, he comes as Lord Ramachandra, as a Kshatriya. And after Lord Ramachandra, then he came as Lord Krishna. And this Lord Krishna, he's a Vaishya. He's in the family of the cowherd man, the son of Nanda Maharaj. Hmm? And then in this Kali Yuga, he came as Lord Chaitanya. He's a Brahmana again. Lord Chaitanya was born in the Brahmana family. So the Lord can appear in any position, in many different situations. Sometimes he will come also as, as a, in the form like Manchya Avatar. He will come as a fish to save the Vedas. Sometimes he will come as a boar to pick up the earth planet from the bottom of the universe. And sometimes he comes also half lion, half man. So the Lord is not limited to any particular form. He can appear in whatever form he likes, according to the situation. And he comes in these different forms. Always his mission is as described in the Bhagavad Gita. 
Paritranaya Sadunam Dharma Samstapanarthaya Sambhavami Yuge The Lord comes to, to re-establish the principles of religion and to give pleasure to the devotees and to annihilate the miscreants, the demons. So this is the mission of the Lord. And he, you can see how he does it in so many wonderful ways. Particularly, this wonderful incarnation is Lord Vamanade to come as a young boy and to trick Bali Maharaj and to defeat Sukracharya. So this is the pastime of Lord Vamanadeva. Is that anybody, any questions you want to ask? Uh, actually, Bali Maharaj uh, took revenge on Indra Dev because uh, Indra Dev killed his father Virochana. Why did uh, Indra Dev was not punished for this one? Because he should not have killed uh, Virochana. Well, Indra, he, he, he was performing his duty as a king of heaven. As the king of heaven, he has to keep the law and order. Virochana was a demon. He was actually against the principles of, of the Lord, the, the principles of Dharma, which Indra was overseeing. And so when there's something wrong, when, when the different demons, when they give trouble in the universe, then at that time, the demigods, they, they have to sometimes kill these demons. And sometimes the demons are too powerful and the demigods can't kill them. At that time the Lord has to come himself and kill them. So Virochana, he was actually against the principles of religion. So although he was the son of Prahlad Maharaj, he became a demon. You see, it's not that every, every time one is a, one is devotee. Prahlad was a devotee, Bali Maharaj was a devotee the grandson. But the actual son of Prahlad was not devotee. So Indra killed him. And you have other situations like Bomasura. Bomasura, Boma was the son of Bhumi, the earth. And he was killed by Lord Krishna. The father of Bomasura is Lord Varaha. When Lord Varaha picked up Mother Earth from the, the bottom of the universe, at that time he impregnated Mother Bhumi and the child was Boma. So in the beginning the child was very nice, but then he became, became fallen. He, he had bad association. It all depends on association. If we associate with devotees, that is a safe situation. But when we associate with the non-devotees, then you get problems, you see? Just like uh, there, was the, there was that one monkey who was the... Uh, with, uh, with, yeah. He was the... Uh, he had fought actually with Lord Ramachandra, on the side of Lord Ramachandra. And what was the name again? That Anyway, Dvit, huh? Dvit, Dvit, it's a gorilla, something. Yeah, yeah. There were, anyway, there's a, there was one demon he had been fighting with Lord Ramachandra, helped Lord Ramachandra to win the battle of Lanka against Ravan. But then he became corrupted in bad association. And then he did very bad behavior. He met Lord Balaram and he was trying to do bad things. And, and Lord Balaram ended up killing him. But that's mercy also for the demon. When they're killed by the Lord, it's very special, mercy. Because when they're killed by the Lord, then they get liberation. So it's not ordinary. Special, special demons are killed by the Lord. Other demons sometimes Indra kills them. Just like there was the one demon, Britta, Britta Sura. 
Britta's Indra had to Vritasura was leading the army of the demons against the demigods and Indra didn't know how to defeat this demon and he came to the Lord and he prayed to the Lord and he asked the Lord, please can you kill him for us? But the Lord told Indra, no, I'm not going to kill him, you kill him yourself. <laughs> but he told him how to do it. He told him, you can get the weapon from the bones of a great yogi, make a weapon, you can use that to kill him. So sometimes the Lord will kill the demons, sometimes he will tell Indra, you do it yourself. So Indra had killed Virocha. Just like when Arjuna has to fight in battle of Kurukshetra, Krishna's Krishna's there, but Krishna's not doing everything. Arjuna has to fight. Right? He wants Arjuna to do the work. In the same way, some people say, you know, the the oh, there was one man. I was, we were telling him what you have to do to be a devotee, you have to chant 16 rounds. He, so he said, oh, he said, I'll pay somebody to chant my rounds. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that's not the way, right? You can't do that. But sometimes people think like that. The same way, oh, I, I have something to, let Krishna should do it for me. Just let Krishna do it. Oh, Krishna wants to see us endeavor. Krishna tells Arjuna, become the instrument. Nimitta matra bhava sabya sachin. He wants Arjuna to use his skill, to use his talents in the service of Krishna. So whatever we can do, the perfection is do it for Krishna. Chanting Hare Krishna, dancing for Krishna, eating prasada for Krishna, very simple things. All that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, do it for me, do it for Krishna. So Pali Maharaj, he gave everything for Krishna. No lamenting, right? Oh, I had it, oh, I lost everything. Krishna took everything away. Oh, he's happy. He's joyful. What about the third step? You told me three steps. I only could take two. Oh, third step on my head. Okay, very good. Very nice. This is success. He's a really great devotee, Bali Maharaj. So we honor him, the Acharya of Atmani Vedana. Surrendered everything to Lord Ramana. Lord Ramana. So that was on Tuesday. Any other question? Anybody? Okay, very good. Thank you very much. So now we're going to have Arti, is it? Okay. Another five minutes, so question? Somebody? Ramanate, one of the ten avatars. Kauki avatar, who is it in the Kali Yuga? The Ka Kauke avatar, there is Kauke avatar, comes at the end of the Kali Yuga. Right? That is Kauke avatar. We had already book Lord Buddha was one avatar in the Kali Yuga. He was one of one of the ten avatars. And at the end of the Kali Yuga, there is Kauki avatar. Kauki rides on a horse. And he will come, he will kill all who is ever left at the end of the Kali Yuga. He will kill them and then begin again Satya Yuga. Because all the saintly persons, they won't stay here. Because Kali Yuga, the world becomes so bad, so fallen, so sinful. They go away. Even when this Kali Yuga began, 
Vyasadeva went to Himalayas. He went up to the Himalayas to stay in the Himalayas. He's waiting there for this Kali Yuga to finish. And when the Kali Yuga is over, then he will come back. Ashwatthama, he's another one. You know Ashwatthama, right? He did some bad things. He's wandering around and he has to wait till the end of Kali Yuga, next Yuga, such a Yuga, he'll begin again. He has some function because he's an Amara. There are some Amaras, right? They don't die. They live a very long time. Would you like to be Amara? No? No. Very difficult. There was one great yogi, Markandeya Rishi. He got the blessing that he could live through the night of Brahma. He wouldn't die. So it, usually, you know, at the end of the day of Brahma, there's a night. And at the night of Bra when the night of Brahma comes, then there's total devastation everywhere, blood everywhere. Total devastation. But Markandeya Rishi had the benediction, he would not die. So he had to, he had to float in the ocean. <laughs> he had to be in that ocean and there were big, horrible, huge, huge creatures in the sea. It was terrifying. And there was nothing to eat. No food. How will you survive? Just float in the ocean. <laughs> so he was lamenting that he had this benediction that he had to live a long time. But who is actually the, the Yuga avatar in Kali Yuga? It's not Kalki and it's not Buddha. But the Kali Yuga avatar is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, right. Why? Why don't we worship Lord Buddha? There's a reason for that. We don't celebrate also the appearance of Lord Buddha because he rejected the Vedas. He told not to follow the Vedas, to give up the Vedas. So the Acharyas all say, don't worship Buddha. You don't need to do that. Because Buddha taught nothing, didn't want to use any Vedas, any scriptures. He rejected all the scriptures. So we don't use any, we don't have any festival for Lord Buddha. And that's the reason why we don't celebrate. But the Kali Yuga avatar is actually Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to teach everyone how to follow the Yuga Dharma. Kali Yuga Dharma, Hari Nam Sankirtan. Right. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to establish the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of the holy names, to teach everyone how to chant Hare Krishna. And this is actually how to surrender to Krishna. We want to surrender. We know we don't. We can't be like Bali Maharaj and give a big kingdom. You know we're not very powerful. We're not able to give up everything. But we can be like Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya surrender everything by chanting the holy name of Krishna, dancing, chanting. That is sankirtan, and this is the mood of surrender when we chant and dance engage the body, mind and words all in the service of Krishna, then it's very nice, very pleasing, and very satisfying to Lord Krishna. Okay? We ready now, Prabhu? Still doing okay. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. <laughs> Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, how does the Satya Yuga start? Is it like today is the end of Kali Yuga, the next day morning is uh, Satya Yuga? Is that like that? Or, uh? <laughs> <laughs> well, we know a little bit about uh, Kali Yuga, how it, how it began, right? How did Kali Yuga begin? It happened that uh, Maharaj Parikshit was touring and he saw the personality of Kali. Actually, it said Kali Yuga was meant to begin at the time of the battle of Kurukshetra. 
but Lord Krishna was present on the planet. So because Lord Krishna was personally present on the planet, Kali Yuga could not begin. But then Lord Krishna finished his pastimes and he disappeared. And then Maharaj Parikshit was present. And Maharaj Parikshit, he chastised the personality of Kali. Because Kali Yuga was personified by this personality of Kali. Kali Yuga began with all the adharma, all the irreligion, meat eating, and it began with the, he was killing a cow, he was threatening the cow. So this was, oh, this, they'd never seen this before. One cow was being badly treated, and the bull was standing on one leg, a little piece of one leg, and the cow was being beaten, had tears in her eyes. This was the beginning of Kali Yuga. But so long as Maharaj Parikshit was there, he was controlling it. He was keeping Kali under control. He told him, you cannot go wherever. You can only, he told the personality of Kali, you can only go where there is meat eating, intoxication, gambling, and illicit connection with the opposite sex. So Kali said, then I have nowhere to go. So then Parikshit Maharaj gave a concession. He said, then you can go wherever there's hoarding of wealth, where there's too much gold, you can go there. Because where there's too much wealth, then all the other things will come. So how does Satya Yuga begin? Kali Yuga began like that with all the irreligion, all the bad things. How does the Satya Yuga begin? All the bad people are killed. Kauki comes on a horse, finishes everyone. And the great sages who are all in the, the holy places, they've gone to the mountains and they're in the Padrik Ashram and like that. They come down, they come down and they start again. And they begin again. The Satya. And Everyone, Satya Yuga means everyone is very good devotee, very pious, very pure, Paramahamsa. And they strictly follow the religious principles. So in this way, the Satya Yuga begins again. When the people become all very pure, very godly, very religious. Of course, we cannot just simply kill it. Lord Chaitanya was told by Lord Nityananda when Jagai and Madhai came, Lord Nityananda had been trying to tell them to chant the holy name and Lord Nityananda got hit on the head. Lord Chaitanya was going to kill them. But Lord Nityananda said, no, in this age you have to be merciful because many fallen souls Many fallen souls, Kali Yuga, fallen, people are fallen. And this Kali Yuga, we're only beginning the Kali Yuga, 5,000 years have passed, 427,000 years are remaining. A long time before the Satya Yuga comes, right? You want to stay around? <laughs> We can sit to think how it will become, how degraded the whole planet will become. 420. Now we're in the golden era of the Kali Yuga. For 10,000 years only. The golden era. But after that, then very bad. Very fallen. Very hopeless. People will all have to live underground. They will eat human flesh, oh, very difficult situation. So we don't want to stick around for the rest of the Kali Yuga. So Lord Chaitanya has come to give us all the chanting of the Holy